Often seen as the direct opposite of capitalism, there is no single philosophy or political creed that defines socialism. There is, however, a common thread running through all socialist movements, which is that of social ownership. That in one sense or the other, the means of wealth creation and hence the wealth itself belongs to society as a whole rather than a limited number of individuals. The actual implementation of this can vary between full-blooded state ownership and control of virtually everything, essentially the communist model, to variants of free market capitalism where workers have shares in their employing companies and there is a much more equitable distribution of profits. The idea of control of a society lying with all of the members of that society rather than some form of autocracy or plutocracy has a long and distinguished history. Many consider the ancient Greek society to be a form of socialism. The slaves' revolt led by Spartacus is thought of as one of the first socialist revolutions, and many Christian socialists point to the teachings of Jesus, particularly the Sermon on the Mount, as essentially socialist tracts. Modern socialism, however, is regarded as starting during the Industrial Revolution in the early 19th century. Conditions for workers in the new factories were poor and their wages were low, yet the factory owners were becoming extremely rich as world trade increased rapidly. Movements such as the Chartists and followers of socialist thinkers like Robert Owen in Britain and Charles Fourier in France proposed models of society based on free communities with communal ownership of property. Philosophers like John Stuart Mill in his Principles of Political Economy provided a theoretical basis for these new models of society. It was at this time that the movement began to split between those who wanted revolutionary change straight to the more extreme forms of socialism who began to call themselves communists, and those who favoured democratic evolutionary change who kept the term socialist and also started to call themselves social democrats. The split grew during the European revolutions of 1848, which the communists saw as replacing one elite, the aristocrats, with another, the bourgeoisie, essentially the upper middle class. The social democrats instead saw them as an important stage in a longer process. The latter part of the 19th century saw the forming of social democratic political parties such as the SPD in Germany and the Labour Party in Britain from socialist societies such as the Fabian Society and the increasingly important trade union movements. International organisations such as the International Working Men's Association were formed in order to spread socialist ideas and maintain international solidarity. Two large meetings were held, the First and Second Internationals, in 1866 and 1889. Although ostensibly about solidarity, in fact they exacerbated the divisions between the two branches of socialist thought. The beginning of the 20th century saw the first social democratic government in Australia in 1904, and the first members of the British Labour Party elected. But the carnage of the First World War brought about many profound changes. The Russian Revolution brought into existence the first communist state, which managed to hang on despite desperate actions by the rest of the capitalist world, who were fearful that this form of violent revolution might spread. Social democratic parties were formed and gained electoral success in many countries throughout Europe, such as Sweden, France, Italy and Spain. In the rest of the world, movements started in Argentina, Chile and even the USA. The kibbutz movement started in what is now Israel. Traditional capitalist parties fought back, most notably in Spain where a civil war brought down an elected socialist government, and in Italy and Germany where national socialist movements usurped many socialist ideas into a particularly nasty form of plutocracy. The Second World War saw the opposing camps of Communist Russia and Capitalist Britain and the USA combine to defeat the militarist dictatorships that had come from National Socialism. In its aftermath, social democratic parties assumed the roles of government or major opposition in many European countries. Russia expanded its influence and became the USSR, although by this time it had ceased to be socialist in anything but name and become a party plutocracy led by a dictator. Revolutionary socialism spread in Asia, notably in China, Korea and Vietnam, and Central South America, such as Cuba. In response, the USA moved to a more extreme form of capitalism, regarding anything vaguely socialist as a dangerous enemy. By the beginning of the 21st century, everything had calmed down. The Soviet Union had collapsed, the other so-called communist regimes had embraced capitalism to a greater or lesser extent. Social democratic parties either held power or were significant forces in all European countries and most of the rest of the world. Even the USA has an avowed socialist as a potential candidate for president. 
As technological and social change move the world towards a post-capitalist society and concern grows about the vast gap in wealth, education, living standards and technology between rich and poor, many of the original socialist ideas free from the taint of violent revolution and backed by long experience and a serious political ideology may become the norm. very expensive and very risky. Not only would ships fall foul of the weather and the sea, but also of pirates and indigenous populations not always pleased to see their wealth plundered. These costs are first borne by a few...